story for our new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe. Fuck yes. Oh boy, am I excited about this one. You guys feel that fun energy in the room? Yeah. There's a lot of love. There's the Iron Patriot, as always. Give it up for our head of security. Yeah. Iron Patriot. I'm so glad to be here on this very hot week in LA. Yeah. It must be crazy under that yeah, suit. Yeah, I need to get some air conditioning in here. <laughs> what, what about just like tying bags of ice to like your belt area and just letting them melt throughout the day? Well, the, the heat's my, the least of my concern is the weight. This is a very heavy costume. It's heavy. How much does it weigh? It's about 30 pounds. Wow. So Kettlebell nonstop. It's all these funny jokes that take my mind off it though through the night. Oh. You can yeah. you can listen to podcasts through your uh, helmet. Oh yeah, yeah. Really? I love I love listening. Really? So you listen to things while you're dressed like that? Yeah, I, I'm in my kitchen cooking like this. <laughs> in the bathroom shaving. I love it. That must be a workout, though. Are you sore, like sometimes? Yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's intense because I gotta go out and make money on four nights a week. This is my fifth night out because right. I had to go out in Hollywood Boulevard and uh, make some tips, you know, to make money. And uh, you take the bus everywhere you go when you're yeah. dressed like that, right? Yeah, yeah, because I can't sit down and I don't have to come down here and dress down here. It's better to be at home where I can look at the mirror and get it all straight. Um, Are you hung out with any of the other guys, like like Superman, Wonder Woman, is that uh, I know all those guys. You know, you know the guy that's on Confessions of a Superhero? You right. seen that documentary? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Christopher Dennis. Yeah, I know him. He's a cool guy. Yeah. He, he takes himself real seriously. He's, he's an intense dude. Yeah. It seems like. <laughs> yeah, he smokes a lot of weed, man. Does he? Yeah. Does he ever hold you down? Sorry. No, it's okay. Does he what? Does he ever hold you down and try to, like, advance sexually? No, uh, he, like, he likes young girls. <laughs> hey, how much pot have you been smoking lately? Uh, not much. I didn't get any last week. I didn't see Red Band after the show. But... Oh, yeah, you got to check in with us. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. That, that, I really like that experience, and um, I listen to the Shroom Fest, and I like to get into some of that too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shroom Fest episode. Yeah, with Skeptic Ari Shafir. Did you guys listen to that with Ari Shafir on the Skeptic Tank? They all went to um, Joshua Tree. That picture's great with you too, where you did a picture right next yeah. to you two, and you guys yeah. look real close to you two. Yeah, thank you. I mean, Ari has the hat, and every, everybody looks. It was fun. a lot of fun. What do you think? Uh, what do you think you would do if you did mushrooms? Where would you go? Um, deep into the deep crevices of my mind to, to ponder the mysteries. Of the I love it. You know, it is an, it, reality is an illusion. I love it. The Iron Patriot, head of security. The head of security. He wasn't there for me 15 minutes ago, though, when I got stung by a bee on the stairway. Uh, yeah, laugh it up, fuckers. Really funny. <laughs> fucking be. I felt something land on my neck. I slap. I feel it flutter like I didn't kill it. Like I must have gotten the side of my finger on it. It flapped around. And then I slap it again, but right before the slap lands, boom. Got me. Back of the neck of all places. Which was really bad because my two closest friends to me have like the worst vision and they're arguing over whether there's a stinger in there or there isn't. I'm just trying to find somebody with normal eyes. Give it up for Josh Martin, everyone. That's him. Wow. He does not look like he has no eyes. Not the, not the guy you want inspecting your neck to see if there's a bee stinger in there or not. Was there was there still the stinger in there? No, it wasn't. Uh, did he suck it out just to make sure? Yeah. Back your neck? Yeah. He, su- he sucked it out of my penis. All the venom. The bee stings in my butthole. Well, as you know, people, we have a lot of fun. There's been a lot of uh, great, great news on the front of the show uh things are all taken off it's all happening you guys are part of a something very exciting it is most everybody knows pretty much the layout we pick uh, names out of a hat with a always a new guest and always one of my funniest friends and uh this week we have a very special guest that uh, we're going to bring up now before we get it kicked off put your hands together for him ladies and gentlemen from the naughty show from comedy central down and dirty everything Punch drunk every Monday, every Tuesday. Yo, yo, yo! The great Sam Tripoli. How are you? Come on. Good to be here. Good to be here. It's a word. Great show so far. I am so excited to have you on this bad boy because... Uh, this is one of the most unfuckable crowds I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> 
This looks like a sex act anonymous meeting right here. Seriously. Hell yeah. Thanks for coming, guys. We draw. We, I draw a really good looking crowd of. Them. That's all right, dude. Ugly people buy merch. Not that you're ugly. You guys are. You're a good looking crew. But ugly people buy merch. Trust me on that one. What's I like this guy. Who's this dude? Right. You come here all the time, don't you? Yeah. You're like shady. Who are you, Russian? What are you, Siberian? It's like the white Rick Ross. Yeah. It's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, you got all, you're correct. I'm it's like, like Rick Ross dressed for less. Yeah. Huh. He's sitting next to uh, Sarah Dresses. Remember her from uh, Oh, big week? drama with this yeah. one. Well, yeah, she looks like big drama. Sarah, why don't you come up here for a second? We need to, oh, we need to man. talk to you. For yeah, a for those of you that don't know, uh, Sarah was um, <laughs> at Sarah Dresses on Twitter. She uh, she missed her spot last week. What we did with her was. Uh, you're a comedian? Yeah. And she was the only person who we don't go out of the bucket for. She was here the very first night that we did this show, and she was the only female that was willing to be part of it. Do, Why? Do Women don't want to be a part of it? Uh, no, that was then. It was just week one. Nobody knew what was going on. People thought I was just going to be completely mean to them, and uh, like I was just going to... Shit on them? Right. Which, you know, Not that, you, Tony. No. You know, that happens organically. Yeah. Um, but uh, she was the only one So we said, hey, as a reward For breaking the female ice on the show Why don't you close out every show Plus it was her first time doing stand-up So we felt like we were building her from within Doing something really cool for her and then Oh, she's she the Rosa Parks of Killing Tony? Yes Yeah, and she, we did not have this idea before It just right. kind of uh, organically happened right. And I was like, wow, she now has a spot on the show Yeah right. And then, uh, and then I know. fucked it up yeah, you fucked it up big time. She's learning a lesson in professionalism. Are you telling me that a young chick with big tits didn't appreciate the opportunities that was given to her? <laughs> I've never heard of that before in that my life. Exactly ever, what happened. ever heard of that. That is absolutely... I've never, I've never heard like an older guy bring up that point either. Okay, Whoa. that's cool. Oh, jeez. That's, right. that's one way to fix a burnt bridge. Is yeah. to uh, burn it some more. Yeah. Just bring a little bit more gasoline to it. Yeah. By the way, I've heard that before a thousand times. <laughs> Now, no, and uh, you know, she missed her spot, and we were, you know, uh, the Iron Patriot now has a trademark noise that he makes when somebody gets blacklisted from the show. <laughs> <laughs> and so, that is awesome. <laughs> that was that police academy for two right. seconds. Because we blacklist people, um, and uh, if you missed a spot before, we're trying to uh, police it, and uh, yes. That would be the sound of us policing it, and, uh, you know. So, Red Band and I were talking about what, how to handle this situation. Yeah, so we decided, we heard somebody, a friend of ours, another female, a sexy female. Oh, shit. Uh, did comedy for her first time downstairs tonight. <laughs> and right. we're going to try to give her a chance to uh, fill your shoes, be the second Chrissy. Yeah, fucking shocker. If you don't get what you want from the first one, you bring in a new one. That's right. Yeah, we're all replaceable. Bring, this, it, bring this, in the July model. This is Hollywood. Yeah. This is how it works. All right, cool. So this is a lesson in professionalism. Right. Uh, <laughs> hear that? That's the sound of you waking up for a shift at 7 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Red band! Well written! Well oh, written! Yeah, baby. We're pumping. Um, but uh, so what we're actually going to call it is a probation to be decided at a later date, perhaps even at the end of the show. It might become a dike off. Who knows? Yeah, I'm into it's it. true. I'm halfway into it. And the one who scissors the other one the hardest would then get to come back next week. <laughs> that would be how that uh, gets solved. Or it could be a taste, like we taste which one. Right. Whoa. This isn't a fucking statement. You got mad at my fucking statement. You're just loving their fucking no, statements. I just said, like, how am I supposed to even fucking guilt? What is this, like, are we at fucking Costco? Hey, hey, it was actually because the parking meter expired. She needed to put some more change in. Yeah, fucking sorry that I had to go put money in my co in my fucking house. Like, Sounds like poor well, timing to me. I got problems like everybody else. <laughs> you know what that is? Uh-oh. That's the death of That's my That's an old uncle. school clock. <laughs> <laughs> 
Alright, are you guys done like fucking me? Uh uh, I just started. <laughs> <laughs> but he's quick, so don't worry. Yeah. Typical. Yeah. <laughs> Who laughed at that? Alright, so uh, <laughs> you're blackballed too. Yes. Can we blackball audience members? Yeah. I saw him ruin people's lives. And anytime you call it, uh, he has to make that noise, so. That was not me. That was Sarah's vagina. Because it just got wrecked. <laughs> have she, has she done stand up on the show? Three times. Three times. Last week would have been her fourth time with the amazing Ari Shafir. And she, uh, she decided to, you know, in this business, you have to know when you have to put money in your meter. Right? What What is this look, by the way? Wait, was it because he was Jewish? What, what the fuck does that mean? What is your look? My old and sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> current glasses for old and sloppy. No, then that wouldn't be old and sloppy. That would be the opposite of the look I'm going for. But I want to know what your look is. These two are going to end up fucking in like five minutes. <laughs> you got the first one there, right? I don't fuck you. You look up. like you're from the uh, Echo Park of the North Pole. That's what you look like. <laughs> I'm oh shocked you didn't go where's Waldo. No, no, that's what you do. I go Echo Park of the North Pole and crush it. Yeah. Waldo's too easy. You you put that on planning to do a Waldo joke. Wait, no. Waldo, I'm sure you're fine. I'm listening. Waldo you're good. Better than if it's I don't know. Easy. I just dress how I fucking think looks good. I am woman. Hear me roar. Are fucking into it? Sweet. And who said we're not into it? How do you know that I want to fuck elves? How do you not know that? You don't know what I'm into. I've seen your Did you come in here all I've fucking with your vagina guarded up, all angry? Come on, stop burning bras. Hang out for a little while. Okay? There's not, you don't got to march on everything, all right? You have full rights now. You can do whatever you fucking want to. Loosen the fuck up. It's called comedy. Full rights. Yeah, you have full rights. Shut the fuck up then. Okay. Oh, cool, right? Jesus. Get around me, guys. What a, Get around She's yeah. such a... <laughs> you put me in a bad mood, you fucking blacklist me. Like, this is the first place I did this shit. Now you're like, I'm getting a new bitch. Oh, uh, this is just the beginning. You're still in the running. You're going to be back next week. There you okay. go. You don't know the rules of the game. Yeah. We're writing the rules right you now. You don't know the rules of the game. Right now, this is better than if you got up to do comedy. Yeah, listen to the Patriot. <laughs> listen to the... We're going to love this. Listen to my squeaky arm of justice over there. <laughs> I love what you say, Patriot. Does anyone great. who knows about freedom of speech, it's the Patriot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know what, Tony? I think it's time we meet Kim. Oh, let, oh you want to do that now? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, all right, there's Sarah. There goes Sarah, everybody. Sarah. And uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, our new, the newest comedian in Hollywood, as of just less than probably half an hour ago, downstairs in the original room. Put your hands together for everybody. There is still blood from the cherry that's hot. Can you give me a Sure, if you want to. Or you can lower it. Look at that. Yeah, got it. Alright. Is it working? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> is this thing on? What's up? Welcome. Thank you. How do you feel about uh, being part of a live podcast and a show? So tonight was your first night doing comedy. Yeah, yeah. How'd it go? I went up there and the um, the wire fell out of the mic and I'd never even touched the mic before. I did none of the together. I think I did okay. I was real nervous. I said a joke about my dad touching me, um, and that didn't go over. I don't know why. Why would that kill? <laughs> <laughs> I got told why after. Never again. Huh? Okay. My dad didn't touch me. You sound disappointed. <laughs> I got a hot dad, huh? <laughs> Patriot on uh, on first impressions and likability and charisma and look alone. Uh, how do you uh, feel about uh, Kimberly? I like her. She's got a good look. Uh, just put the mic right up on your lips, though. Just get it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> See, this is why. This is where it starts. You can. Never She's just trying to stand up. You're telling her to blow the microphone. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is where, like, in two years, she's gonna be the f fucking most angry lesbian fucking comic out there. Going, can I just do joke? So let's not do that. Let's just, um, let's encourage her to do well. Okay. Uh, you can never tell when the Patriots, uh, like, trying to help with audio issues or just being a pervert. 
Hey, uh, put the microphone closer hey, to your lips. Uh, now rub it against your crotch. Yeah. <laughs> like your dad did. Um, no, I think he was just trying to say to project your voice because you do have that is a, you you have a very voice. small mouth. Back. Yeah. I mean, you sound I like you're hiding voice. from your dad trying to touch you. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely gotta own it more. Yeah. Very long. Is the throat. mic, is the mic volume on that just, just okay? low? Yeah. Yeah, better. Yeah. <laughs> you are so creepy, Patriot. <laughs> which is amazing because you're a guy wearing a suit, which is normally starts at creepy. Yeah. The fact that you out creepy that is amazing. Week, 4th of July, Thursday. Oh yeah, that's right. This is a big week for you, huh? Good this week. You're oh, like the people shit. that own a Halloween store every day. You ever go by the Halloween store like on a July? You're like, what do you guys got going on? <laughs> Halloween's every night. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, I got some interesting trivia about you. I wanted to ask you about Sam. I can't tell who you're talking to. You. Oh, me, okay. I have read some trivia that said you were one of only two comedians to start off as a paid regular in the main room. The only other one is Roseanne Barr. Yeah. Is that true? That is true. true. Yeah. That's incredible. Thank you. all these comedians have to suffer through all this, and you No, no, I was the first one when she made me a regular. Uh, a that my first spot was a main room spot, which is unheard of. Great. When, when, when Roseanne did it, she got it was a different but, time yeah. and era, and that night she, on the, her first spot at the comedy, she store, got a TV show off that. Yeah, I got my cable turned she off. She got Carson. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's so true. It's how crazy the different times are. So uh, should we give give her uh, a chance to prepare some material for the end of the show? Yep, absolutely. Right, Get your so. sixty seconds ready. We'll check in with you at the end of the show. You guys ready to start the uh, the comedy portion of? Uh, you can throw that on my stand. Good job. What's your Twitter handle? Kimberly Can. At Kimberly Can. Yeah. What's your nationality? Uh, my mom's Puerto Rican and my dad's something white. Something white? Yeah. I like that. This is yeah. horrible. You don't see a lot of Puerto Ricans out here. Alright, we'll call you back at the end of the show. Apparently, their low riding Thanks. bikes aren't easy to go cross country on. That would have killed in New York. You guys ready to get this thing kick started or what? Yeah. Kick started? I feel oh like we're God. at one of those, like, those, a donkey show. That's how they it vibe is. in this room right now. This is the donkey show of podcasts. Let's watch someone get fucked by an animal. Fuck yeah. All right. I pulled a name out. Put your hands together for your first comedian doing 60 seconds. It's Ryan Dowd, everybody. Ryan Dowd. There he is. Ryan Dowd. Ryan Dowd. Hey, you guys have been great. You know, you know, keep up your enthusiasm. It's like I, I think I should do. I should just kind of kill you all with kindness. Actually, that's like a terrible phrase. Cause what else can you do violently to people that's nice? You can't go up to people and be like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna rape your daughter with friendship. I'm gonna blunt force trauma you with appreciation. I'm gonna pull the plug on your grandpa with free healthcare. Doesn't really work. Oh, fuck. Jesus. Jesus, people. Actually, I've been thinking a lot about Jesus lately. You know? Uh, just thinking about Jesus. Actually, I've been thinking about St. Joseph more. Because, like, he was lying next to Mary, and he kind of rolled over one night. He's like, hey, how... Mary, we're oh, married now. How about we... Uh, it's like, <laughs> no, I've already had God. Fuck. How could you even compete with that? How did that even go? Was it just like... <sighs> Oh, God. That's right, bitch. Say my name. Oh, no, Mary. I'm going to come. Oh, uh, you know what that means. That kitty sound means that's the 60 seconds, everybody. Um, 60 seconds of fury, brother. Heck, yeah. I watched most of those seconds click on my watch. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I would, though. It's like, why am I staring at my watch? <laughs> okay, what do we do? What do we start with the good, then go into the bad, or what? Any way you want to do it. Okay, We're very unorthodox. I love the level of joke you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. It's fucking great. But you have a creepy vibe, and that's a good thing, because you'll probably be in Conan in about three weeks, okay? <laughs> you have a great vibe, but you won't open up with a rape joke. How long have you been doing comedy? Like, two years. Yeah, I, it's like, that's a hard thing to open up with, right? Right out of the gate, you have... Dahmer energy. 
Just to let you know that. <laughs> Whether it's good or bad, you, you look like you love to rape dead people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And that's worth acknowledging. That is, it. and that's why you're gonna work in Hollywood. It, it just that's who's running Hollywood. Creepy, fucking weird dudes. So they're gonna look at you. They go, "Hey, that's me on stage." One thing I know you don't do. You you don't look at the crowd. No. You so you if you're gonna do those fucking jokes, bro, you gotta commit to that shit. You gotta be like, "Yeah, I rape children. Fuck you." You know what I'm saying? You gotta look them right in the eye and let them know, "Hey, man, I might really rape these kids." <laughs> You gotta own that shit, dude. You got you're scared. Yeah. I, I sense blood. When he was on stage. He's What's that? Yeah. I was scared when he was on stage. I and mean, that's why I was looking at my watch. But see, I like that. I like that you're trying to do kind of that crazier shit, and that's I like that kind of comedy. But you gotta commit to it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you're gonna rate that chick, rate that chick, man. <laughs> and that's gonna use against me. I'm gonna that sound like a <laughs> For the rest of my fucking life. I mean, even the way you're standing with your arms crossed like that, man, oh, yeah. like that's amazing. Like it's incredible. No, don't not do it because yeah, it go works. back to it. Show you everybody what I was talking about. No, but it was more like they were one was just resting on top of the other one. Yeah, it was like that. Like if you did that and kept the mic in the mic stand and looked like you do, yeah, you could talk about a lot of fun, creepy shit. Yeah, you definitely have that, and I think it's gonna go good for you. Yeah. You just gotta own it, dude. Yeah. Because, I mean, and then he looks like he lives with his mother, right? Oh, totally. But your mom is dead upstairs right. in the <laughs> attic. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have some cooler, you have to have freezer jokes, you have to have cannibal jokes. Yeah. I love the level of comedy you're doing. You just gotta, you gotta right. really commit to that, bro. Right. And then, but you got good stuff. Ooh. Yeah. But yeah. acknowledge the way that you look. Cause, yeah. uh, I mean, you, you should have When you walk on stage, vagina snaps shut. Instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Except for there's a couple girls here just like, oh, yeah. My dad would hate them. So, boom, you got shot. There's no... Ryan Dowd. There you go. Ryan, good job. One down. You're all set you the microphone just gave up on them. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Your next... Comedian Michael Benson. Oh, yeah. Boom. Here he is. Yeah. All right. Yes. How's it doing? Yeah. I do look like a coked out Matthew Broderick. Jesus Christ on <laughs> ice. Oh, that's what I want to see. I want to see Jesus Christ on ice coming to Vegas. Hey, uh, it's bloody all, all. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Let's talk about what I wrote down. Uh, I like to think of myself as a compassionate person. I'm usually the first one to say. If there's anything you need, Dan, just let me know. I know you've been going through a tough time, and, you know, your girlfriend just broke up with you, and you've been feeling kind of sick. But if there's anything you need, just let me know. And their usual response is, No, that's okay, Mike. I'm fine. Well, then fine. Fuck you, then. You're lost. Because I'm an amazing human being, and you just missed out on some grade A compassion, baby. I could have been there for you, serving you chicken noodle soup and giving you amazing hand jobs. Because my left hand has twice the strength as my right hand, because I'm handicapped. But you don't get that type of loving with a U V I N. Nick loving. Anyway, uh, no, my, my mother thinks that, you know, you, you should have called your father. All right, there we go. Here's it's, the cat meow. All right, that's a 60 seconds. All right. Hell yeah. Right. Thank you very much, guys. There he is, Michael Benson. Uh, I want oh, that yeah. guy to protect me. Can I sit by that guy now? The guy that was just on stage? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So far, we're having a creep off. Um, <laughs> I forgot how creepy all the mic was on. <laughs> They're not all like this. <laughs> this is a random lottery uh, uh, situation, and nothing could prove it more than our first two comedians back to back being uh, stalkers of some kind. I mean, holy shit! I like it. What's your condition? What is your uh, cerebral palsy? Oh wow! Use that, bro. Yeah, no, I have help. five str strong minutes on this. Can I give you a suggestion? Yeah. Put a sock over it. Make it your comedy. <laughs> I've been. Um, Never talked to each other. Like, yeah. why are you gonna use the puppet? Never uses it. Yeah. I've actually been working on it. No, I've been looking for a really decent sock. I, I've, got, I've heard that a couple of times before, and I've been just trying to find a bit around that. But yeah, thank you. Oh my god. Hello. All right. I'm a mangled head. I'm not scared. All right, all right. You can write it later. <laughs> 
Stop. Calm the fuck down. All right. <laughs> oh, I mean, the name. <laughs> or you could even do like a well, what would it be like a sandwich bag yeah. or something like that. You could go a lot of different ways with it. Yo yo. But do you, you gotta have to put something like over that? that thing. Do I have to? No, I do this to accentuate a point or to show, hey, I am. God hate you? What? <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> I would definitely, uh... It was 1984, he did too much cocaine yeah. and said, Hey, I don't know, let's put a handicap thing on him. Hey, right. dude, use it till all it's worth, bro. Oh, yeah. I did. Oh, Any reason you get on TV, yeah. just tell him, you fucking, whatever, just do it. Yeah. Uh, I like your energy. You know, exactly. you've got to, um... The thing about going up there high energy like that, people can't, con they start concentrating on your energety and not what you're saying. All right. Yeah. You have, it, I call it controlled chaos. You've got to control it. You gotta be able to get your point across, and then you can explode into craziness, so you can hear what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. You're so excited, I have no clue what the fuck you're talking about. You're fucking sweating, you know? All like, right, yeah. The, like only part you that, this guy. the only part of you that wasn't going 190 miles an hour was your right hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, <laughs> it was just, it looked, no. it, it looked like glow but Again, I like, I, you know, I like <laughs> what you're doing. Yeah. You just gotta like, because they gotta digest everything you're, you're saying. That's, yeah. that's comedy, it's the, Weird. It's the hardest art out there because we have everybody in the room has to know what you're talking about. If I'm rapping, nobody knows what the fuck I'm talking about. They don't give a shit. They just know they're in the club. You know what I'm saying? But here they got digested, so you got to slow it down. Yeah. yeah, you're very, very edgy. I like that. Really edgy, like very palsy material. You were saying. <laughs> yeah. I love my palsy. Anybody heard that? We need a pun sound effects. Yeah. The, when you sneeze, does they your hand look like a salmon out of the water? Yeah, a little bit. You know, I just. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You should make yeah. it a puppet, bro. I yeah, think totally. that would crush. Totally. Yeah, it probably would. I think it would be the most hilarious I shit ever. Should, I'll come back in a two weeks and do it, try and see if I, I can do it. I would love to see it. Yeah, I think, and, and that's a big tag. It Put a sock on it. <laughs> Put a sock <laughs> on it. Michael Benson, everybody. Right, there you right go. Right. Right. Flying through it. At M at MJB Comedy, by the way. You can follow Michael Benson on Twitter. Uh, Ryan Dowd was at There Is No Point. Michael Benson at MJB Comedy. Love it. Here's one for you. Kyle Henson. I got Kyle talking about drunk girls. Kyle Henson. Kyle Henson. Oh. All right. Hello. Hello. You guys are awesome. I have like four Hollywood girls at one of my sets. Super attractive, but anytime somebody has too much to drink, they want to talk during your set. Super distracting. This guy was like, oh my god, I'm just going to take a picture of my nails and upload them to Instagram. But I don't know if I should make them blurry on the outside or just turn them into a Polaroid. But I don't want to be rude. I had to bring them into it. I had to be nice. I was like, I was like, ma'am, ma'am, excuse me, excuse me, shh. Um, let me guess, let me guess. Uh, 25, 25, 30, 32? She's like, are you serious? We're only 21. Like, that's how many pounds you lose, you fat ass. Don't talk during my set. Exchange that chapstick for glue stick and shut the fuck up. It's kind of hard to take you serious because your BMI looks like a lot like your bowling score. Thank you, guys, and Um, All right. First of all, everyone just fucking relax. Everybody, why would you clap for that? No, I'm kidding. Um, that's that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting joke to just go over uh, heckles and crowd work that happened at a different show. Um, so I didn't write anything for tonight, but let me tell you what happened to me in a set a few days ago. Uh, so there's these hecklers, four of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you, the the whole thing is that you know. The, you start one premise and then you go into another premise, yeah. which is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that definitely. There was something in the middle of there, which I started daydreaming so hard. I'm like, oh fuck, where am I again? No, no, yeah. you're the Muppet Force. No, it was Marge Simpson. <laughs> no. Oh my god. I, th I I think it's great, and you know, you're talking about your life. I'm sure that happened at some point. You just have to. The whole thing is about focusing it. I don't know what you're talking about. That's after a while, dude. It's just, it's a great premise. You know, because you're going to run into that. And you that's a great joke to do after you actually get heckled. 
<laughs> Which is gonna happen yeah, every exactly. fucking day of your life. Right. Totally. Because people are a bunch of fucking assholes. Yeah. And plus your body language says be ruthless. But you know, out of everybody here today, you're the best at coming up on stage and dealing with people. So people wanna like you when you get up there. You know, it's just like what's your I mean it's nineties, it's sixty seconds. It's hard. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'd open with that. What nationality are you? Uh, half black, half white on a good day. What does that mean on a good day? Uh, there's no bad days. Uh, by the way, this is the this <laughs> That is the worst catchphrase I've ever heard in my entire life. I don't know how often you use that as a I mean, I'm sure you get asked a lot what nationality you are. If you do that on a good day thing every time, that's unbearable. <laughs> there's one thing you could take from it from this appearance tonight, it would definitely be that. I mean, that's an off stage. That'll make nobody ever want to work with you again. Anybody who hears that, whether it be a comedian or an executive, they're like, I don't even want to be near this guy anymore. I'm half, half black, half white on a good day. That means you put them all in position to go, well, what do you mean? And then you go, there's no bad days. I mean, that's just ridiculous. That's like poorly written dialogue in a shitty movie. Like the dialogue in an already shitty movie where your expectations are so low already. You're like, the, ah. It worked in the mirror. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're half boy. Half you black. got it! <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> Kyle Henson, everybody. There you go. Take that with you. Kyle, you're funny. I got heckled. I, uh, I was doing a late, late, late night fallout a few nights ago in the original room downstairs. It was like 2.05 in the morning. This is a true story. Maybe That's usually about up. an hour before I go up. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm doing a spot. There's like six drunk people in the room. One guy is super drunk heckling me, sitting off to the side. And uh, I'm laying into him because he's heckling me, heckling me. And I'm, I'm laying into him. And he goes, he's, remember, he's sitting off to the side. And I'm doing stand-up facing straight out. And he goes, I don't need to take this from you, man. You've only got one ear. <laughs> to which I responded, still looking straight up, that's because you're looking at one side of my face. It was a, an unbelievable highlight of my career. Um, By the way, I think we set the record for most T.I. looking like guys in one, <laughs> in one yeah. place. May, may, Maybach music. Yeah. I got the whole group up there. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's no chains. And, uh, <laughs> Kanye worst. I love it. The whole crew. All right, let's keep this fun train moving along. Up next, Paul Aaliyah. Oh shit! He gave us the, he gave us the guns as he came up. He gave us the guns. Uh, you guys, I'm a Catholic Arab from Iraq. Yeah, I'm like a white running back. You know, there's just uh, I'm like a straight theater major. They're just. My family's from Iraq, and uh, my dad doesn't understand English that well. You know, he just knows some words mean like "awesome," "dude," "love," "pick up at 3:30." You know, some of those words. But uh, when I was a kid, I loved doing comedy. You know, so I used to tell my dad jokes. So the first joke, first joke I told my dad, I was like, "Dad, uh, I've watched the news lately, and apparently some guy pickpocketed a midget. How can someone stoop so low?" You know, okay. this is my dad's reaction. My dad was like, "This, oh." <laughs> <laughs> Paul, your jokes hurt my eyes. Okay, you are going to law school, not comedy shit. Hey, let me tell you a joke. An Arab goes to LA to do comedy. That's the joke. <laughs> That's the joke! My name is Paul I. Thanks, guys. Okay, uh... I gotta just say right off the bat, there's something about you that I just love to hate. I mean, you are like the type of guy that's just my arch nemesis. Why? I, 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 there's just, there's just something. I mean, I just, it's unbearable. Really? It's, 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 there's just so, certain types of young comedians. It's like they try. It's like not they try. It's I, I, whether they're trying or they just are as like, like this. Like there's this thing, and I, I don't think anybody talks like that in real life. But I see everybody doing this trickery, and it's like, and and, 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 the, and, the, and this is not off material. I'm just talking about right. first impressions, basically. Oh, right, okay, right. so you're not saying his material sucks. You're saying he sucks. I mean, I hadn't gotten to that part yet. Uh, no, I mean, it, it was it wasn't horrendous, but I mean, 
every... You're saying his material has a chance, but he's fucked. There is not a Middle Eastern comedian that I've ever heard that doesn't have a joke about telling their dad a joke and about how serious they are and they don't laugh and then the dad tells a joke that, you know, get a job. Right. I mean, it is just... Uh, uh, you could do better than I that. It, do, was, it doesn't match what you're pushing out there. I think he was up on the wave surfing for a moment with a midget and how can you stoop that low? And then when he went into the father, I was still, he was on the wave, but he just fell off the wave. It, 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 was, it was okay. It was right there. If you finish this it. is my nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> just getting comedy tips from a guy who in a fucking suit. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is easy to sit here and judge, you're right, it is, it is easy to just, you know, somebody comes up on stage and just sit back and criticize, you know what I mean? Right. Totally. I did why, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, two years. Two years. It's my first time doing a minute. Okay. So, no, 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 and don't take what I'm saying as, you know, don't, oh, no, go, no. don't, don't take it hard on yourself, it's just a part of the show, and, right. uh, like, I, I was just being on, like, it's not, it's just... I don't know. It's hard to explain the feeling that I get. There's certain he people. Said, when he does How like old the, are you? 25. 25. Listen, How long have you been doing stand-up? Two years. Two years. Two years. <laughs> right. Is it when he goes into that? I wonder what like, it is. Robert De Niro stuff where he's like kind of... Any active, comedian like that does this thing a lot, like where, they're, where they have to keep your... Not, you not even have to, where they keep your attention by doing this shit, and if you listen to the words, it's just really not that, like... Are you an actor? Yeah. That's why. Oh, of course. That's why. There you go. It's always that. Ah! Okay. I get what you guys are saying. There's some truth to that. But I know where that material would kill. And that, you're like, you know, in the uh, axis of evil and stuff like that. And this town loves that shit. Right. You know? Right. Absolutely. I get where you're coming from and why you're doing that. Right. Right. But I think you're going to find that 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 is a limited art. I don't know why. I think it's. I think, did that story really happen? Uh, very similar, yes. When I first came out to LA, I told my dad that joke, and he was like, it's, it's, it's so stupid. Like, <laughs> when, it, when it's more performing than it is an attempt at being this, funny. It takes weird. away from what's really going on. Right. And that's the, the truth. So you know, like to, you yeah, have to I have some jokes that I add elements of acting. There's some jokes that are just like bullshit about girls or LA and shit like that. I, I think, you know, I, th- I got what you get. The, yeah, I got it. Because, you know, I grew up with all the guys who are now the, like, the big Arab comics. And, you know, we've heard everything before. I would like to have, like, more of personal stuff to you than, than that stuff. I think that, I mean, it's a great starter. But I think that, you know, if everything you're saying about your suit is that you could go with some real fucking original shit that would blow everybody's mind. Right. Because you got to stand out, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, here's the thing, guys. You can do stuff that gets laughs in a room. And that's fine, because it's a qu- quick rise to the middle, and you're just gonna be stuck in the fucking middle. That's all that's gonna happen. You're just gonna fucking hey, dude, I move so fast because everyone's left, and you do nothing original, and you just get to the middle, and you go fucking nowhere. So true. You want, you know what, man? Fa- if you're gonna fail, fail big. Why don't you fail big, then fucking succeed a little? That's so, all I'm saying, man. So right? true. So that sounds great, man, and I get it because you're gonna audition for some fucking progressive piece of shit casting director who's secretly fucking racist and hates fucking everybody because no one would fuck her in high school, okay? And you're going to do that stuff, she's going to love it because she doesn't have to fucking think. Right. But you're never going to be able to go anywhere farther. Right. Do you want to be fucking great? Then you got to do greatness. you got to go out there and fucking fail. You know what? That shit would have killed in the Arabian Night show. Here with these fucking soulless motherfuckers. <laughs> They want a fucking piece of your soul, man. You gotta go out there and give them something real, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I get what you're doing, but if you wanna go far, you gotta give them something different. Yeah. Come back next week, some more shit. There you go, sign up Good again. Stuff. Paul Alea, at Paul Alea123 on Twitter. If you're listening out there. By the way, just to let you know where I'm coming from, today I cried in my w- mirror thinking about blowing my brains out. So take everything from <laughs> brain and soul. It will happen soon. It will. <laughs> That was great what you just said. I mean, that's really a breakthrough uh, part of uh, of this. Whole, that's an amazing topic you just hit about working their way to the middle. Um, I've seen it happen a thousand times. People that people that perform more than they're being funny uh, will get uh, these. Those are those people that get 
one spot on Conan or whatever, and then maybe the half hour special, they can churn out 22 minutes of that, but it's people like that that you never see again. Like it, it ha you have to have something that people can love about you. I remember it's Joey always, Diaz talking about oh, okay. Joey Diaz go on, Patriot. Until he really let go. Right. Who's there saying he's so, who's he yeah. securing you from? Empty chairs? What is this? <laughs> well, <clears throat> one thing that's interesting is it's finding your voice. That's something that took right. a long time to do. Like, because I used to kind of have a character that was just an over exaggerated version of me. I even had once had a version that was like an urban version of me where I was just trying to be like MC Chris, which is this like white rapper. It's just like, hey guys, what's going on? You know, kind of like a Cesaria, you know, that dude, whatever his name is. I was just like that guy. Who? He's a snark, oh, God. whatever the fuck that. that but God. I did. I just just to mix it up because I was like, you know what? I just kind of why not? I might try it. And then it took me a long time to actually just go on stage and be like, all right, I'm just acting like I'm talking to my friend. And the only one of the only ways to really be able to even find that is to just take chances. It's yeah. better to eat shit than what have the, than what? half patty. In fact, it was this room really in which I really. This room has a special place in my heart because this is where I made that breakthrough of, oh my God, because I was working here. And before then, or back then at the time, I could just hustle up here. I was opening up every belly room show. I mean, I was doing two or three spots a night here. It was unbelievable because they weren't giving spots out to newer. It was just something that I was doing. I was going, hey, start your show five minutes early. I'll warm up the room and then I'll bring your host up. And it, everybody, why wouldn't you do that? Right? So I did it all the time, and it was through all those every night, which I'm like, holy shit, if I just get one little thing out of fucking taking a million chances, that's a keeper, that's all key, of those man. add up. Can't be afraid to fail, man. It's crazy. Can't be afraid to fail. Here's how I think... Slow clap on that. <laughs> Here's what I think about comedy. I've said this before, and I, I think this is it. There's two kind of comics out there, and I'm not judging either one. They are what they are. I don't think one is better than the other. There are two kinds of comics. There's clowns and there's shit talkers. Sometimes you have some shit talking clowns and sometimes you have some clown shit talkers. Okay? Truth of the matter is, clowns work more. They'll book commercials. They'll book fucking sh sitcoms. They'll work more. But the legends are shit talkers. Make no doubts about it. The legends are shit talkers. You guys go out there with a point... They have something to say. I'm not saying you gotta get preachy, but you you know you're going up there because you want to. You want your reaction from what you want to say, not you don't want to get say something that gets a reaction. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's it, man. That's all the great ones. I know guys who sell out arenas, and I'm not judging anybody. Even though I like shit talkers, I'm not judging it. God bless you. Whatever you can do, you do. But the guys, I know guys, who, some of the dudes who sell out giant theaters. Giant theaters never mentioned as one of the great ones working right now. And that's, at the end of the day, what everybody wants, to be considered one of the greats. It's true. And that's why these dudes who go around stealing jokes all the time, because they think it's, it's like win at all costs, and they fucking get busted, and they're automatically taken off the list of the people who are the greatest, they go fucking nuts, and they're constantly miserable, because they're never going to get what they want, and that's to be considered the GOAT. That's all they did for. Okay, they yeah. wanted to be the GOAT. Mencia looks like he has full-blown cancer and oh, AIDS yeah. right now. Yeah. How do you look like you have cancer and AIDS? Dude, that was a snuff film. Brian, did you see what you did to that guy? <laughs> that's a snuff film. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, uh, is, it, is that okay for me to say that? Brian was the cameraman in the back of the original room during the famous Rogan Mencia incident. This is the Zapruder of comedy. Put your fucking hands together back there, you sons of bitches. What are you, Mencia fans? All right, guy in the wheelchair, you don't have to clap, it's okay. All right, let's keep this fun train moving along. Brilliant shit, put your hands together for Sam Tripoli. I mean, we're still doing it, but I fucking love that. I love taking a tangent into some real fucking shit. Uh, we know this guy. He just got lucky. I pulled his name out. At Gabriel Killian on Twitter. His name's Gabriel Killian, everybody. Here he is. Hey, where are you? Oh, no. Don't do it, Gabe. Oh, don't you do it, Gabe. It's hard enough for an Armenian to make it in this town. Oh, shit. What's that mean, Iron Patriot? Oh, shit. <laughs> Bam. Holy shit. <laughs> Gabriel Killian just got blacklisted. Royalty life you saved, there's a million new ways to die. <laughs> they 
there you go. That's a, that's a catchphrase for you from the Iron Patriot. Give, give us another one. Guy's gonna be doing hookah bars. Lead these new Avengers into battle against anyone who would threaten our way of life. Yeah. Just between me and you, here's my little secret: the bad guys always win. Me killing you is perfect symbolism for the times. <laughs> There he is, everybody. Ph phony Stark, everyone. All right. Phony Stark. <laughs> no, but he's supposed to be the black guy. I am Patriot, Don Cheadle. Yeah. I'm actually Wait a second. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. There's an actual guy called the Iron Patriot. Yeah. And you're that guy? No, he's not that guy. Listen, listen, no, I mean, I know he's not the guy from the movie. Whoa, whoa, settle down, Patriot. First of all. This is your first week with a microphone. Just relax. Yeah. Oh, now it's on your dick. Oh, now it's on your dick. Uh, <laughs> He's doing it on purpose. John Kendall? <laughs> let me explain. Patriot, just relax. Let me get a breath in, okay? Just yeah. take... Can, I just, have a bad habit of interrupting, you know that. Just relax. You're, you're, this is your first time behind the microphone. You keep running into it over and over again. Just yeah. relax. Take a breath. Can you breathe okay? You gave me thing? some of that weed you have, maybe I would be relaxed. Oh my god. <laughs> oh shit. There he is, the irony patriot, everybody. The, I <laughs> the irony patriot. Um, so you're, you're, and you're a white guy, right? Well, actually, I'm the iron paper patriot from the comics, Norm Osborn, that used to be Green Goblin. They changed it in the movie because they don't own the rights to Spider-Man and Grieve Goblin. They changed it he so gets, he didn't... They he didn't gets so right. passionate when he starts talking about Somewhere this there's character. a chat board missing its auditor. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, what's it called? No, they're not auditors. They're admin, sorry, thank you. Okay, let's keep this fun train moving along. We've just blacklisted Gabe Killian. Put your hands together. Okay, we got you. Don't be racist now, all right? No, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's bad to be a black iron pig, but I'm a white iron pig. When you say that, it means you did mean that, by the way, when you make that disclosure. <laughs> Disclaimer. I'm really fucking up. I love it. Kyle Shore, everybody. Add Kyle Shore. Noah Ark. Noah Ark. He's doing a Noah Ark joke. Some people might think it's too soon for a Noah's Ark joke. I say it's right on time. Here he is. Uh, I read this in the Bible. Uh, so it's scientific fact. Read it on Wikipedia. Uh, dinosaurs are extinct because they didn't get on the ark. Let that sink in, I know. It wasn't in your history books. It's true. I actually asked my, my nana, I was like, uh, nana, like, how to have He's like, well, it's kind of like Land Before Time, like the animated dinosaurs. Like Land Before Time 13, the Great Flood. Because there actually is 12 Land Before Times, apparently. And I guess like the first act, a bunch of dinosaurs just run around because like, like their food supply got killed and there's water coming. Second act, like a T-Rex chases them. And then like the third act, they find like a white dude by a boat who just has like a list, like a bouncer, like giraffes, get in. Crocodiles, barely. Talking dinosaurs, no, get over there with the unicorns and gorgons. <laughs> or Gorgai, I don't know, Aquarium, him, Aquarium, I don't know. Oh my god, where's the cat? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Where's the cat? Jesus oh. Christ. Woo! Man. I mean, holy shit. Uh, I don't know what happened in the time that you were on stage, but the energy in the room got sucked out. Is it just me? No. You guys back there, how do you feel? What's going on? It hurts. Hey, you settle down. You're blacklisted, or you're on probation. Blackface. Don't violate your probation. <laughs> <laughs> so the premise of the joke is what? That dinosaurs are extinct because they didn't get on Noah's Ark. Hmm. I don't think... It's an interesting theory. Um, My friend told me I think it's too soon for the dinosaur Noah's Ark joke. Um, I just don't think people are ready. Uh... I mean, and I like being edgy at times, you know, some people, you know, I like writing jokes when people die and like tweeting them out there. It's one of my favorite things. I did nine on Gandolfini, had to pay tribute to the man, the myth. James Gandolfini, everyone, right? Oh, by the way, I, uh, I fired my memorial coach. I mean, my memorial agent, he couldn't get me in there, so I'm like, fuck you, you're done. I dropped him. What's memorial agent? 
my agent gets me in all the memorials. That's hot, man. How much was the tickets? Did you hear a price at all? Well, it's, it's fucking, uh, it was Black Tie Affair. Yeah, it was crazy. I couldn't get in on this piss. Uh, so, so you, like, dude, I get it, man. I, I, I get it. That's funny. I like the premise. It's just execution, dude. Right. You know, I just, it, it's just like weird. I, I, you know, it's like, I, I don't. I think I saw that joke uh, chiseled into one of the stones, um, the commandment bricks. Nothing? All right, cool. Uh, Kyle, sure. Are you in- I, I just, you know, when it comes to dinosaurs and Noah's Ark, that's just like, uh, it's just not, no one wants to even hear it. Was right? it, was it the word? <laughs> the ice age? Was it the ice age? Uh, that's a whole different conversation, yeah. Patriot, that we're not Don't you have an encyclopedia somewhere in that fucking suit? <laughs> <laughs> I need a computer. Where's my computer? Hey, man, if you're going to do those jokes, and that's fine, you gotta you got to have a reason to do those jokes. I mean, right. you know what I'm saying? It's just like the kick the Bible is. I, I, I don't know, man. Right. I just feel even, like even it's the word done. Bible. I saw a couple people get up and realize they had to go to the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> I, I get like, it. I get what you're trying to do, and yeah, it is full of stupid stories. I get it. But yeah. it's like you got to have a really good reason, a very unique thought that comes when you're going to do it. There's you almost know? nothing more depressing. It's almost less depressing to talk about somebody's uh, like a death than it is to talk about the Bible possibly being realistic. Like, it just makes people uncomfortable nowadays. Something's happened in the last five to ten years, and obviously a little bit before that, but people it, are just done with religion, man. It's been done right before many, many times, though. You know, and like Joe Rogan's you Noah's Ark. Right. Jo- Joe Rogan's Noah's Ark bit, one of the biggest, the best bits I've ever heard and ever do. And, but it doesn't mean you can't do the, a, but, a premise on it, but you just gotta have... It, Listen, dude, powerful. if that's the stuff you like to do, you gotta fucking really go for it. Right. You know what I'm saying? You gotta really bring that heat. Because at the end of the day, man, it's also about entertainment. Right. You you can get them thinking, but you gotta get them laughing. That's, again, why comedy is such a limited fucking art. Because if they don't laugh, they could be enjoying listening, but if they go five minutes without laughing, everyone's like, what's going on here? Nobody's laughing. So you gotta fucking, if you're gonna go in there, you gotta have a, a, a really good reason to go there. That's all I'm saying. There he goes, Kyle Shore, everybody. Let's keep it. I'm being too serious. No, no, it's great. No, you're doing great. I think it's. I think you're funny, dude. <clears throat> Your next comedian, ladies and gentlemen, his name is Timmy Day. <laughs> Timmy Day. Oh shit! Uh, what do we got Timmy here? Day. Timmy Day, you are blacklisted. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I like that. He got excited. Oh. oh, I think he just came in his suit. Um, he got excited on that one. Were you laughing in there? That was very orgasmic, Tony. Oh, wow. All right, Timmy Day, you are blacklisted. Heck yeah. Put your hands together for Jason Bogart. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I knew you, Jason. Have fun, buddy. Yeah, no, I wouldn't consider myself a uh, stereotypical guy, but I found out recently that Will Smith is my neighbor in Calabasas, and um, I gotta admit, I started locking my doors at night. It's not that I think that um, all Scientologists are gonna break into my car and put an alien in there, but the rich ones can. Will can afford that. He can put a, uh, one of them stress testers on my steering wheel, which would screw it all up. You'll get in your car, you'll sit down, you won't notice the alien. You'll look over, put on your seatbelt, see the alien, freak the fuck out, and then your, your steering wheel is going to tell you that you're stressed out. And suddenly, Hancock is going to come flying in from the sky with a Dianetics book, throw it in your lap, and say, come on, join my fucking religion, motherfucker. Which is exactly what I don't want to do. Because you freak me out. Stay on your side of the fence, Will Smith. My grandma warned me about you people. Scientologists freak her out too. I'm not sure if that's a minute or not. I think you got it. Yeah, you got it right. Um, I like I that he thought it. it was going one way and it goes the other way. You yeah. think he was going to do a joke about black people stealing from him. And then right. Why would I do that? I'm black, Sam. I'm I got Detroit. Like, that's why I'm saying. That's where you're leading it to, and everyone's like, uh-oh, where are we going with this? Right. Boom, it's a Scientology joke. Totally. And, right. I, and I love how real it is. You, re- you really paint a picture of it being, hey, you're that guy. Holy shit. You live close to Will Smith. 
wow, it's yours. Nobody else, this is, you're never going to hear anybody doing that joke. No, yeah, no, I, I just found out I live next door to Will Smith. Boom. I love that about it. It's always things like that that is one in a million. You can really own that premise. I mean, you can get into some crazy shit. Yeah, take, even, take the ice cream scoop in the middle. Take that shit out about the car and stuff like that. But yeah, I think you don't that, need a car. Yeah, right. take, I think you just hear about living next door to a, a Scientologist and all the crazy shit they believe yeah. in. Yeah, right. I realized, like, halfway into it that I forgot to push record on my phone, so it just, like, so you totally just threw me off. Yeah. Well, you, hey, you, you know what? You They're recording. You know this is a podcast <laughs> with <laughs> video and audio, right? You know that. What? You know this is a podcast with video and audio, oh. right? <laughs> yeah, I know that now. You're I knew so that before, too. Exactly. Uh, wow. This is part of the other Oh, thing. I see. You do have your uh, phone set up there. Yeah. You, for, you had that set up perfectly, probably. Yeah. For frame, it was right dead on, like, yeah. yeah. Well, you sure. see that camera right there? Congratulations, my friend. <laughs> See, that's all. Yeah, I would just, I would get rid of the car stuff because then people are like, they're focusing on stuff they don't need to. Just be like, dude, who wants to live next to a Scientologist? And you can just go through just general stuff. Yeah, totally. You got a great premise, man. And, Thank you. Uh, hell yeah. And a great neighbor. So Rock and roll. <laughs> all right. Yeah. 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 Someone give you a dog. Dog. That's great. Fraser Smith does a funny joke. Uh, he goes, uh, how do you find Will Smith in the snow? Oh. You look for the Fresh Prince. Ah! <laughs> and then he flicks his thumb with his... He does that after joke. Come on, folks. Fraser Smith is great. Yeah. However, your next comedian is Kenneth Lyon, everybody. Action. Oh, there he is. I like Kenneth. He's a good guy. Ah. Here he is. Uh, Storm Arms. How are you, bud? It's good to see you. Doing good. Hello. Uh, bought a ticket to a rave. Worst decision of my life. <laughs> this guy by the name of David Guetta was playing. <laughs> Horrible. I was in the crowd yelling, David! Yeah! yeah! <laughs> How many people were just part of that? Thing? I feel like I heard. Is, is that like it's like we were in a flash mob. Yeah. Is that weird? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Was that a vine mob? Was this like? Is this like some kind of prank on us? This is the Rock Paper Gang. Hell yeah, Rock Paper Gang! They just bailed on you right there. How come there. I they can't still... see them anywhere? By the way, you are the most Asian Asian I've seen in a yeah. long time. Yeah. I think that's going to work well for you. I've met you before. I like your energy. I think it's great. Great stage yeah. presence. I thought the joke was... I mean, if you're in the rage, you probably know what you're talking about. So yeah, I mean, it's fine. David, get, get up. Get out of here. I gotcha. What's that train going on? It's my phone. Oh. I see. All right, man. I, I might give you some tip. Never have your phone out when you're Definitely. showcasing any of that. Definitely. Never a, even at a comedy club at all, because anybody with any. Have you got an sense. agent yet? No. Why aren't you doing that, dude? You're so Asian. You have Chinese writing on your shirt. Yeah. I even think that uh, translates to CA. Do you have bound feet too? What are you doing, bro? Go get an agent. I told you that. You're so super Asian. You're gonna work like a motherfucker. Yeah. You're gonna do Panda Express commercials. <laughs> You're gonna be manager at Verizon Wireless. You're just fucking. Totally. There's so much work out there, and you're just being a lazy fuck, man. Asians are hardworking people, bro. Gotta get out there, and make it happen. Oh, Why aren't you doing it? Kenny, tell them. I've been tell hanging out with you guys. He's Guatemalan. Yeah. Who oh are you hanging out God. with? Mozilla and Jim. Mozilla, you're hanging out with? He's like, <laughs> what are you molesting this guy? Yeah. What are you like, doing hanging out with Mozilla? Fifty-five. Can you, can you tell somebody's not a good influence with yeah. under the influence? Driving you from one open mic to the next. Does he make you play with his Dragon Ball Zs? <laughs> <laughs> ah, you've been hanging around the pun master. Heck yeah. Dude, you got to get... Faux show, faux show. You've got to get an agent. Stop being a bitch. Get a fucking agent. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Mugzilla's not going to introduce you to the right people yeah. this town. No. <laughs> no. See that? He has elephantitis of his neck. <laughs> oh, nothing on that, people? Do, you, do I need to show you what Mozilla looks like to get a laugh? Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, 
Fuck yeah, man. Uh, do you skateboard? Is that what I always see? Yeah. That's interesting. You really? Skateboarding. Well, because... Uh, Someone in their 20s is skateboarding? That's interesting. How old, <laughs> how old are you? Hold me. He could be like... In Asian, they always look no, young. Really this guy could young, be like right? 85. You're not old enough to be in here. No. All right, there he goes, everybody. Kenneth Lyon. I picked another. I was like, I, I was trying to look for facial hair, and then I realized he's Asian, so there's never going to be hair there. You'd be like 97. Yeah, you can never tell with them. Get a fucking agent. Yeah. See, thank you. Thank you later, buddy. I just got you kicked out. All right, everybody. Uh, your next comedian's name is Jonathan Tumblin. Yeah. Oh, snap. There we go. Yeah. Weren't you the manager here at one point? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have a joke about having a job. Okay. Yeah, good segue. Well, that's original um, for a black guy. <laughs> Come on, it's oh, jokes. Shut up. <laughs> Uh, I tutor rich white kids in Westwood, and um, I t I'm a math tutor, and then, like, I had a head fuck one time, I tutored an Asian kid, and I, I don't think he thought that black people could do math. He was, he was fighting me the whole time or whatever, but the kid I mainly tutor is this kid, he's addicted to this game called Minecraft. Yeah, the one. She's addicted to it too. It sucks. It's a stupid game. Everybody's just not playing. It's a cult following, but his mom hates that he plays it. So. She's like, Jonathan, could you make sure that Sam does his homework instead of playing Minecraft? I'm like, sure. And then I tell him, like, you gotta put the game up. He's like, well, what else am I supposed to do? So I tell him the only thing myself as a 28-year-old man could tell a 13-year-old kid is discover yourself, man. Play with your dick. And that's my joke. How old is he? <laughs> oh my god. That's great. True story. story. That's my creepy fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 it. it went from like a, inspirational a, a math thing to uh jerking off this is a great example of when you, how long you've been doing comedy uh like eight months okay wow when you say the the detail of he likes warcraft is that what it is mine warcraft mine, minecraft minecraft well Only now you say that there's a like it's the it's unnecessary detail you're painting too much of a picture and i think when you're really a young comic you want to overpaint the picture yeah, always. you're giving so much detail and it's your it's a way you get away from right. getting to the punchline right. the key is to say only what's pertinent to to your totally. crowd understanding Unlo the punchline unless cool. um, unless it is coming back to minecraft we don't need to know it's minecraft all of a sudden people are thinking, do I know that game? Do I not? Is it Minesweeper is where my brain went? Is it? But he might get bonus points if there's people in the audience that like Yeah, Minecraft. if you're playing Comic-Con. Yeah, if it, if it truly... They're trying to but bang elves. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 but if you're gonna say mine, you know, the game, then there should be a joke about the game. Right, but in the joke that you're doing, it should just be it's tough for him to pay attention. Into yeah, the... he's addicted to the video, and then you can just go into that about you know, I wouldn't say touch your dick because that's gonna get uncomfortable. Touch your head, your head no. crap. What happens? How about just that? getting some pussy, man? Why not? What happens before that? About Am I wrong? Did I go too far on that one? It's like, well, it's yeah, it's who wasn't trying to get late? He's a bit oh, no. I, that's right. When I had my first Hawaiian Tropic magazine and Seriously. I was blowing loads all over my own These chest. These kids don't even jerk off the magazines anymore. I got Game Boys. Oh, it's crazy. They got they clues. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I would say it's a funny joke. I would go more into, you know, black guy teaching math. That's a funny part. Then go into the addiction. Yeah, I have like a whole like four minutes. Yeah, yeah, I, okay, I got you. But yeah, I, that's the biggest thing you learn. Know when to paint a detail, know when not to. All right. What's pertinent to you? How quickly can you get to your punchline? Here's the thing about comedy. This is what you want to do. You want to take your joke? You want to cut it down, then tag the fuck out of it. How quickly can I get to what's going to make you laugh? That's what you got to learn. I remember learning that about five, six, seven months into doing comedy. And I learned it in La Jolla from you. And it changed the game for me. Yeah. I went in and cut out all the fat on so many things when I was uh, doing it about as long as you are. Right. And once you do that, you learn really quick. But it's still a, yeah. Great job, Jonathan Tumblr. Very good. Very good. Good job. Good job. There we go. Yeah, it's Iron Patriot. I remember we were on 423, we were having that discussion with Sarah, and she was talking about how the detail is important. Like, you know, if you say a car, say what type of car. So there is that balance, you know. 
Yeah, it all really depends on whether it, it's all situation to you, situation. Right, right. I mean, it's important in certain aspects, but there, he said that, and it was just, like, there, it really, if he just said video games, yeah, yeah. he could have moved on. We got, we got yeah, the yeah. picture. Yeah, that's not good, yeah. Is Adelson Fitzgerald Holder here? Blacklist him. Blacklist him. Blacklist him. I think you need. You gotta take the Jiffy Lube. Come on, service. You owe, you, you owe us a little bit more than that. Really commit to this one. Fuck <laughs> Fuck yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Adelston, you blacklisted motherfucker. All right. Matty Chimbor. Whoa, here he is. At Matty Chimbor. Ghost. Ghost uh, watching me jerk it. I actually changed it. Is that all right? It's okay. It's okay. Cool. What's up, guys? I only hook up with girls who are smarter than me because when they talk dirty, I got to stop and think. Kind of bothers me. This girl's like, I'm, I'm hooking up with her. And she's like, oh, yeah, it should be like the Seventh Amendment. I'm like, what? Like, what the fuck? This is some bullshit. Like... She wanted me to treat her like the Seventh Amendment, but I fucked her like, thou shall not steal. Because I don't know the difference between uh, amendment and commandment. <laughs> but it's like, I was so, it was such an awful feeling. I was so confused. Like, you know that feeling when you're in high school and you got a test and you read over the first few questions and you had no fucking clue what was going on? That's how my dick felt. It's pretty bad. And that joke was fucking rough. Thanks, guys. Uh, dude, I, I get it. I think it, I thought it was funny. There you go, people like it. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I just couldn't pay attention to it. Why? There's something about, like, it, there's a lot of people talking about, like, commandments and religion and shit, and it's just creeping me out. Like, Scientology, I don't mind, because it hasn't been a topic for 2,000 years. I mean, literally, all the jokes about religion, I guarantee you, they've been done. I mean, that's, that's all there was to that's talk a, about. That's a, a nice little twist. In the only live... Well, I, I, but I also just... All I'm saying is I couldn't listen. Okay. Because there's just something in my brain that just shuts off now when I hear the word Bible or commandments. Maybe it's just a, it's something I'm noticing about myself recently. I guess tonight. I'm the same way. Isn't it weird? Yeah. Like, something's going on to where it just seems... Sports is the same way as me. Religion is sports. What do you want to talk about? Oh, dolphin pussy all day? <laughs> I can talk about dolphin pussy all day. What do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's funny. Dude. I mean, yeah. I mean, it just needs a. I think you could get a better example of what you could say. And you just try different ones. You know what? Because when you drop a, a, a punchline on them, they got to digest it. Now you got them yeah. overthinking. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's even your joke is that. But I think it's a funny premise. I like it. How long have you been doing stand up? Uh, I'll be like three years in November. You live it. You've lived in LA the whole time. Uh, yeah. And, uh, fun, like, fun. I think he's got good stage presence. Yeah, too. I think so too. Do you have a girlfriend? Yeah. How, have you been single the whole time? Uh, I had a girl when I first met her, and then I, that kind of just. So you're just tapping ass right now. Right, How's great. it going for you? Got got your good weeks and bad weeks, you know. Sometimes I love that. Good instead of good days and bad days, it's either just weeks of good or yeah, weeks of bad. There's droughts. I respect the droughts. It's those one week stands. Droughts are good, man. Because like when, when you don't fuck a girl for like a month, these ugly. There's a lot more pretty girls around. Now, do you uh, do you get when, when you start getting really bad? Do you, do you bang fat chicks? Dude, slump busters. Yes. Yeah, dude, dude, I, I have to. It's good to see guys are doing that. Slump buster. Slump buster. How old are you? Twenty six. Yeah, man. Back when I lived in Vegas, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. I go two weeks. It's like I'm, I'm just crushing pigs. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. What is wrong with you kids? I'm talking about, baby. I don't care. That's what it is. Sometimes it's, you guys do that, bro. It's, it's va that's where you do it, Vegas. You do that I mean, every dude. Get it, you know what, man? Sometimes you just gotta. Because if you haven't been late for a while, girls know that it's in your eyes. Fat chicks in Vegas. This guy goes from blackjack to jack in the box. Yeah, looking for, looking for pussy. I like that. Let's see, fat chicks are Asian massage parlors for forty dollars. Doesn't count, dude. It doesn't count. It doesn't Pain count. For it? Nope. There's something about your soul that just eases it. When a girl gives it up. Is it the Cool Ranch Dorito flakes all over your chest when you're done? What no, thing? dude, it's the hand. Paying for a hand job, which I'm not against. I'm not, I didn't say anything about paying It's for just it. not the same thing, dude. When a girl looks you in the eye and says, right. you can be inside me. That means something. It's the thrill of the hunt. 
Right? And then you have to take down a slow one every now and then. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Sometimes I want an easy kill. I don't want to follow, chase the gazelle all over the right. place. Right. I just want to crush right. the old turtle just walking around. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, they love it. They appreciate it. They work way harder. That's they, true. They, they, they want you to... They're all they, about repeat business. Yeah, exactly. They, they want a good Yelp review. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> she may be big, she crushes dick. Right. Yeah, but they're also the ones that try to get pregnant. Well, they are... What? You gotta watch out for the slow, slow you, ones. You, really? Yeah. Not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, only got laid in two years. You probably were the first person to fuck them in two years. They're gonna try dude, to. Why do you. No, dude, you, what, you don't think fat chicks get laid? Sam likes a girl that he can pound and then go get ice cream with her afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I don't know why that's a bad thing. <laughs> Who wants a bone bones? Not this guy. <laughs> Give me some pushing. I wanna go top rope. BAM! <laughs> he's a he's a chubby chaser. Yeah. Oh, you. there you go. Iron Patriot. <laughs> the human hashtag. Yeah. Straight from Caddyshack, everybody. Uh good job. Alright, right, there he goes. Maddie Chinebor at Maddie Chinebor. Put your hands together for Zane Helberg. Zane! Good. <laughs> so life is alright. I, uh, me and my girlfriend are gaining weight together. It's bad. I think we've uh, got a combined 50 pounds on us right now. It's causing fights. The little fucking cherubs. She motorboated me the other day. That doesn't resonate with you, fuck. <laughs> she put her dead. She put her head in between my breasts. We were in the shower together with our fucking fat, disgusting bellies just rubbing together, and she, I mean, her boobs are getting bigger, so she gave me the little, the, the, the squeeze, and I, for whatever fucking reason, squeezed back, and she just went for it. And it was the worst fucking day of my life. We were just, we were just broke, and fat, and angry, and starting fights. Like, the only thing we have left is pregnancy. Alright, that's it. Thank you. That was really good. Let me tell you something. I thought that was great. That's the set of the night, in my opinion, yeah, so far. Yeah. Because I like it's, so, it's such real, honest, true self-deprecation, and it's stuff that nobody wants to talk about, and you're just coming out and owning it. And it's fucking hilarious. I found myself laughing throughout almost the entire thing. I love everything about it. And that is a great fucking thing to be able to own. Because Those are great jokes that you could also go on some. And, 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 right, one more thing. And it, especially that will always resonate in this tough economy where people are struggling and they do just want to, everybody wants to be healthy and everybody's poor. And it's just everything that you're saying resonates with just about everybody. And uh, I think it's just great and real. And you can't beat it when it's both real and connective like, and people can relate. So, so it's great to have awesome. a joke like that, Thanks. really easily digestible joke. Hey, wait, wait, where are you going? Oh. We haven't gotten to the really, really bad news yet. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. There is... No, I have not. I think it's a funny joke. I thought it was, uh, you know, cut down and it's fast. And it's right. it, it would work probably everywhere. Right. And those are good to have a couple of those jokes. Yeah. So then, if you want to go do all the more smart, uh, all the um, more like wordy jokes, where you want to go, hey, look how fucking smart I am. You can do those too, and you have a couple of those that are just really great fucking boom boom, gonna kill anyone. You can walk up on stage anywhere, do that, open with that joke, and it's gonna kill. That's a great fucking joke. Thank you very much. And then you can really run with that ball and write it in, in, you know, afterwards of something that starts like, uh, you know, and I know a lot of people find it strange that I called my girlfriend fat, but, and then you can get into a whole nother premise by delving back and then coming back again, because that's its whole other thing thing is you know it's what you fell in love with it's well whatever that whole thing is i mean that's not even a tag it that's just a whole new premise i mean that you can have from there about talking about saying that your girlfriend's fat because that sounds like a whole nother great joke i love it i love it too i want to fuck you thank you very much you. Boom. i love that i want to fuck you that's really funny real shit i love it all right, put your hands together for Jem. Jem ain't getting blacklisted. He's here. Live in the flesh. Nippy. Y'all ready for this? Oh, shit. <laughs> Sam got excited. Come on, sports jock. 
Hi, Belly Room. Hey. What's up? My name is Jim. That's G E M. What was your name? Um, I'm a little rusty at this. I mean, not like if I penetrate you, I'm going to give you tetanus. But, you know, it's been a while. Um, I, moved, I moved out here uh, 16 months ago to Los Angeles, uh, living in Los Angeles. I, when I first got here, I was living in Beverly Hills. It was in my car. Uh, but uh, when you're living in your car, you know, people mess with you once in a while. One time, this guy was like, I was walking my dog Curly, and this guy was like, hey, why don't you get back in your clown car and get the hell out of here? And I was like, sir, it may be a clown car, but it is a Rodeo clown car. And then I got back in my car, set his mailbox on fire, and got out of there. Yeah. All right, my name is Jim. That's GDM. Thanks. Uh, I don't know where Tony went. Uh, he had to snap one off, he said. He had to jerk one off. <laughs> snap one off. That's so funny. Um, by the way, you hitting on her, I, I imagine that's what every Renaissance festival must look like. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, the joke's good. I think you got to just find a, a little tag. I mean, I'm, sh you know, this room is like, uh, this is uh, a morgue. Pretty much. But I think it's a funny joke. I, you know, I think it's funny, dude. Yeah, I mean, you, your, uh, your bit was cute where the, the, the Beverly Hills one, that was like, you know, like bump, bump, bump type thing. Uh, I had to pee so bad. I did the joke you wrote me last year. I did it. I wrote you a joke. Yeah, the rodeo clown, the rodeo drive. The How'd it go? But it, it went all right. They liked it. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, they liked it. Well, look at you pulling a little trick on me. Yeah, but you got me back because you weren't here for it. I was like, yeah, because you did it. Because you did it. How long you been doing comedy? Sixteen months. Oh wow! Look you at moved you. out here to be a comedian? Yeah. That's cool. What did you do before that? Uh, grew marijuana. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel bad with the legalizing weed. It's like, what are drug dealers going to do now? Yeah. Like, where the, where's that? Molly. Smell? Molly. Molly. Mushroom? Oh, yeah. Mushrooms. <laughs> Molly. Molly, dude? No. Cigarettes. I did 35 months in prison in England for Molly, so. Really? Yeah, you guys you did don't 35 want to months in prison for yeah. Molly? What? That's what you should be talking yeah. about, dude. Yeah. 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 Your fucking car in Beverly Hills is funny. That's what. That's the most interesting. Oh, yeah. That was, that was yeah. my minute one. I'm giving a fuck. You did. That's all you gotta say. I did 35 yeah. months in prison for Molly. Good night. How much? How much Molly that's you have? The baddest motherfucker here. Well, they, the thing about England is, uh, they, they busted sure me with 92 it? pills of ecstasy, right? And they took me to the, and then they took my passport and they let me go. Right. Why do I and then I went out, and then they came and got me like, six months later. They found me because I absconded. I don't know. And, 35 uh, They found another 230 pills. So. Oh. Jesus. Well, I guess is, be is, is, is British prison like Clockwork Orange? Just a bunch of gangs with those fucking yes. top hats and no, it was, they gave you tea every day. It was it was really mellow actually. Really? Yeah. It was... That's what you got to talk about, yeah, dude. Because right. nobody's talking about that. Exactly. Thirty-five months in a Britain prison. Really? Yeah. yeah. Nobody Orange talks about that, dude. Yeah, I mean, and all you got to do is take everything that people know about prisons and make it British prison, and yep. you'll be crushing it. Yep. Make a Downton Abbey <laughs> reference. Uh, the Iron Patriot agreed as well. Yeah. Talk very, about the team. A lot of people are homeless, yeah. but not many people have done that. Jobs, Tony. Yeah, I mean, I think that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Right. How polite are prison rates in Britain? Good day, sir. <laughs> Never got rid of Today I'm going to be entering your arse. It's, it's three years, right? Three, just under One three, years. Shy three years. You did all the raping, God. didn't you? No, no, there was no rape thing. No. Yeah, you smoked some heroin you, in, in English prison. That was, right. Yeah, that was, that was Are you sure you didn't rape Best somebody named Christmas. Molly? Yeah. Is that how you get three years for Molly? <laughs> no. Methylene dioxymethylamphetamine. Oh, my God. Look at That's what you should be talking about, dude. That's oh, wow. the funny action. Next week. Next week. There yeah. you go. Absolutely. And really do the mustache up. It just adds that yeah. kind of like... Find me some good Molly, because this shit out here in L.A. sucks. So. Yeah. Jem, you're not on Twitter? Yeah. Uh, Jem Funny Fuck. Funny Fuck? At Jem Funny Fuck. There you they go. Did you that? Yeah. That's Holly. Jem. Thank you. That's Holly. G-E-L. Funny Fuck. Holly. 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 All right. Quick. Put your hands. Okay. Put your hands together for uh, Hanak. Here he is. I love what's going on here. What's up, guys? And so, and I love Match.com. Match.com, you know, they say that one in five marriages is start online. 
But I also read that one in seven cases of sexual abuse is not online too. So I did the math, and it turns out there's a chance of one in 35 of being raped by our soulmate. <laughs> good joke. Those are good odds. Those are good odds. So I, I, I have a tip, you know, what, for, you know if, you, if you're doing online dating, and as a guy, you gotta be creative if you wanna stand out. Like I messaged this tall girl with beautiful legs, high heels, childbearing ankles, and I messaged her, what do you like to do on your free time other than work on those legs? You know, because chicks dig compliments. So I messaged her again, you know, she, I messaged her again, and I said this time, if we went out on a date, and you wore your highest heels, how tall would you be? See what I did there, I get in her head. She can see herself standing next to me, waiting for high heels, showing off her legs, feeling sassy. She didn't reply, and that's okay. You know, she's playing hard to get. So I knew I had to close the deal with a classic line. There you go. Hand on. I didn't want to cut him off, but then it wouldn't Let me ask you, is it hard dating in a country where women have rights? <laughs> <laughs> No, in Colombia, women can vote. Oh, they can, okay. Yeah, yeah, they can. Um, Since 1957. Since, hey, <laughs> sounds like you've been asked that before. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Isn't that crazy that women used to not have the same rights as us, and we used to throw them around and drag them around and get it clean? And... Yep, it, it used to be a cool place to live. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's so weird, though, that we actually, I mean, I guess it's like just as, like racist people, you know, like, Blacks and whites. Yeah. But, yeah, it makes you think, huh? Well, what are you thinking? I don't know. You thinking about trying to make it so they can't vote again? Yeah. No. Start a, uh... I'm cool with that. It's just weird to me thinking about it. I was just thinking, I saw a documentary recently. It was an old documentary. The guy treated the woman like shit. It just freaked me out. I was like, holy shit. Oh, wait, this is an old movie, so. Yeah, I love, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the, uh, like, the uh, old commercial highlight reels where it's, like, coffee commercials in it. Like, you, this is the worst cup. I it's like a nice wife, like, walking around, she's pouring her husband coffee, takes a sip. All these commercials you say, this is the worst coffee ever. What's your problem, you idiot? It's like all these old commercials, and that just used to be how they would sell shit. It's like, yeah, I want the other coffee. My wife... It needs to stop sucking at things. <laughs> it's pretty uh, interesting. I miss those days. Um, I like that you joke. I think it's a funny joke. Um, I, I don't know. Well, I, I guess you didn't get the finish, so I didn't get to hear the big punch. What is the yeah. big punchline? No, the big, big punchline is that uh, uh, the, the next one, you know, the, the final line is, uh, so what are you wearing? So, so guys, that's how you do it. That's how you freak bitches out. <laughs> she blocked me. She on I cannot online date her. But yeah. So you're stalking? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. I, I think it's funny. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's funny. I like it. It's I good. could. You, you, you could even make that block thing. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Don Barris is here, everybody. Ding Dong Show, starting in T minus. 20 minutes, everybody. Whoa. The longest running show here at the so, comedy store. What's a twist you can All right, well, so we gotta get the last person up. Hey, thank you very much, man. You were great, dude. You yeah. were great. Am I sucking at this? No, it's amazing. Oh. Dude, you're fucking killing. What are you talking about? I don't I know, know how I know this normally it's goes. Oh, you wanna, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, all right, so that's the comedians through the bucket that we were able to get through. Put your hands together for them, everybody, this week. Um, very, very exciting. And uh, right now we are going to uh, switch it over back to our running storyline. Right, we just bringing her up to do yep. comedy. You ready to get her on? Bring your yeah. hands together for her Death Squad debut and the debut of her work on Kill Tony here on episode she's five. She's already comedian. Sam she's Tripoli. getting fucking drunk before the show. She'll be drunk after the show. Put your hands together for everybody. It's Kim Congdon. Here she is. Kimberly Hi, y'all. <laughs> What's up? Um, I'm from Florida. I just did my first stand-up. I think you said that earlier tonight. Um, like, my first time ever. Uh, my mom is uh, Puerto Rican. Uh, we grew up both poor. Like, I'm familiar with like, the way, like, I don't know the difference between good milk, expired milk. It all tastes the same, you know? Um, 
growing up poor, uh, we didn't have like the, the stuff white people had. We didn't fucking eat hummus and pick fruit and have fucking bottled water in the fridge. My mom didn't know what grade I was in, you know, like shit like that. Um, so it was good to have white friends. I feel like that's um, that's something you need in your life when you don't have white people around. Um, and it was always cool going out to dinner with my white friends um, because their parents would order appetizers. <laughs> and that's something I never got. Like that is insane. Like you can eat before your fucking meal, and you don't have to split your plate. That's right. Um, yeah. Okay, there you go. That was good uh, for your first time. Well, first day. Absolutely. Yeah, I love it. Um, that's awesome. I think it's funny. It's a it's a, it's a pretty easy fix, in my opinion. Uh, the way to get a big pop off that would be to move uh, the word appetizers to the end. Of it, you know what I mean. You start it off with appetizers, and then you explain why that is. Instead, I would say, you know, when I hung out with my white friends, we had something that we never got growing up the way I did. And that one thing, you know, in this way it pops because it sneaks in. You're sneaking in a punchline in the front instead of it coming in the back. Cool. Um, off like a bit, uh, patriot. I want to hear your ten cents on the uh, on, yeah. the, on the new. Uh, on Have the you new done regular. theater or anything? Um, no, I'm at school right now. I'm doing, well, I'm my outside concentration is theater. I did my Hold course. on. What? Your outside concentration? Yeah. yeah. Is that a new thing? Yeah, that's, it's like a minor, I guess. But why do they call outside concentration? Yeah, where the He's fuck are you going to college? Uh, uh, Nazi Germany? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, if, if you were to listen to like what you did also, there was a lot of parts where you're like, you know, uh, we didn't have, you know, things in our fridge and this and that. You, then you can give an example. It's like, like in our fridge, we kept our animals, you know, or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's great. For the first time, first time that's awesome. pretty bad yeah. fucking ass. Yeah. Well, what's, your, what's your favorite appetizer? You like a potato skin, fried uh, cheese? Uh, <laughs> Are you hitting on her? <laughs> Thank you to the Olive Garden. That's right. <laughs> I love yeah. you, honey. He's great, right? So yeah, it was good, man. You did great. Thank you. That's awesome. All right, we'll see you next week. Can you be here next Monday? Yeah. All right. So Work she's now too. closing out the show all the she's, time? That's right. She's until, out? Until, yeah. until Sarah's off probation, decided at a later date. Plus, we do know that... Can I ask that, uh, probation? I've heard about that. What's that? Why is Sarah on probation? She missed her spot last week. I went week. to pay for fucking parking and I missed Oh, her. see, now I can tell by the attitude that she doesn't realize what she's done wrong. So you can extend no, it does. another week guaranteed. <laughs> what was that, Don? You know what that horn means? That means probation just got extended, everybody. <laughs> oh, I was putting money in my fucking meter. Oh my god, I've had to do it. What do you, is it you, it's a minute. You would have been a minute yeah. late difference. Is that what you're going to tell Letterman? Is that what you're going to tell Letterman when you miss your spot on Letterman? Oh, I was putting money in my fucking meter, David Letterman. You guys started 20 fucking minutes late. It has nothing to do with what time we start. It has nothing. Your show pretty, starts when we start the show. Yeah, you're trying to rationalize Do you have any friends? Things. Any friends? You know how much a parking ticket is? Forty bucks. You know how much? How many people would pay forty bucks to be on the show every week? A lot. A lot. Just two people would do two people. Okay. <laughs> That's um, eighty bucks, though. All right, all right. Thirty seconds each. Here's the thing. She might be a superstar. She may never relinquish this spot. But you're gonna have to wait. How bad do you want? It? <laughs> Luckily for you. Best case scenario. She could be the Lou Gehrig. She has to go back to college in a month or two. So, hey. Where do you go to college? University of Florida. Wow, oh, that's great. Oh, a chomping game. <laughs> Unless she gets pregnant. <laughs> yes. I, I love the mini rivalry that we built between uh, I know, Sarah and girl. Sarah. <laughs> It's like, who's going to win, the Gator or the Cougar? Um, oh, I'm just kidding. You're a young, you're a young Cougar. Oh, oh, you're so offended. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, oh, look. Now wait, Joe. Oh, you, you really burned me on that one. What are you, uh, what are you, right for the roast or something? Oh, my God. Anyway, uh, Ken, good show. job. Yeah, Ken, Ken good Hongen. job. That's, uh, That's great. Twitter again. What is it? Kimberly Can. Can. C-A-N? C-A-N. C-A-N. Kimberly Can. With a K. Is there an E-Y or just Y? L-Y. L-Y. Kimberly Can. C-A-N. At Kimberly Can on Twitter. Get into the get into the drama. Tell her how you feel. Get into at Great Sarah show, Dresses. Tony. Bash her for uh, missing her spot. And who knows? Maybe we'll throw in some challenge things that maybe she can get involved with to sabotage. Maybe we can have a sabotage. 
It's true. Of them. We'll, we'll, we'll figure this out. Yeah. Some, I said my wrestling. My, oh, oh there come you go. on, Iron Creepy. <laughs> <laughs> the Iron... The Iron... The, uh, what is he? The head of insecurity here. Uh, <laughs> head of insecurity. <laughs> It's been so much fun. Sam Tripoli, you uh, are unbelievable. I knew when I uh, came up with this format with Brian that I could not wait to uh, get you on this show. And my God, am I so excited. I want to kill it. myself. <laughs> Such a funny, funny job. Listen to everything that Sam does. The Punch Drunk uh, podcast. Go on, Sam. I hate life. Light it up. The Naughty Show. The Naughty up. Show, uh, Punch Drunk Sports. Check them all out. iTunes, Stitcher, Sam Tripoli on Twitter is the big one. Right. Thanks for having me here, guys. You guys all be great. You're all very fun. Sam Tripoli. Follow at Comic Patriot on Twitter. He's here every week, lighting it up literally. Uh, I'm at Tony Hinchcliffe on Twitter. And I'm Hinchcliffe. Red Band. Yes. Of course, the one and only Red Band. Thank you as always. So much fun. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Come back next week. I Get love it. Kill Tony.